the topic or the focus of my remarks uh, today are um, focused on what you see on the, on the screen, rethinking volunteerism. Uh, and the first question I'm going to ask is, today's nonprofits really want volunteers? Do they really want an engaged community? I, I didn't, this question uh, is a question that Peter O'Donnell asked as president of Healthy Futures Group in a really great article that's called, um, uh, I always have to look at it, it's a new old day for volunteerism. And lots of good questions in this particular article. Why does this particular question resonate with me? When I was at Volunteer Calgary as the executive director, and I was there for 16 years, it's a great, great place to be, great place to spend your time and your passion. But at the same time, at the end of my career at Volunteer Calgary, I kept thinking, did I do harm? And I believed I did do harm, and I do believe that the organization at that point in time did some harm. And the reason I say that is because we tended to try and box all those nice job descriptions around volunteerism into these tidy little things, tidy little boxes that says, when you come and volunteer with this organization, this is what you do. Here they are. Choose from them and not a lot of flexibility in adding anything new or anything different. And so at, I, I think based on that, this, this question really resonates with me because I think we have to think about it very seriously. Is there a decline in the number of volunteers? Uh, the data says actually that there is a decline in the number of volunteers. I don't quite frankly think there's a decline in the number of volunteers. I think there's a decline in the number of volunteers who want to do same old, same old who want to be put in those little boxes doing the types of things that, that we have always had uh, available for them. Um, next slide is uh, major, major trends impacting volunteerism today. Uh, they're there for you to, to look at and think about. Uh, first one is very definitely time constraints. When you talk to people, ask people to volunteer, one of the first questions is how much time is it going to take? Uh, can I fit that into my life? An awful lot of people don't believe that they have the time that's needed to volunteer, particularly within the context of an organization, formally within the context with an organization. Changing demographics and psychographics very definitely impacting uh, community organizations. It doesn't matter whether you're a Gen X uh, or uh, a Y or an Echo or a Boomer or a retiree as I am, uh, we all have different motivations for why we would want to engage in community, why we'd want to volunteer. Professionalism of the nonprofit sector because of some of the complexity of some of the issues in community, particularly social issues, I think, uh, we have moved more and more to hiring staff for uh, in nonprofit organizations and feeling that for continuity of purpose, continuity of work, we need to continue to hire more and more staff. The emergence of social activism, which I think is tremendous. I don't think there is an organization in this country that wasn't started at one point by a social activist, by somebody who said what's happening isn't working, let's try something new. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. Movement away from the charity model to systemic change has had major impact, I think, on volunteerism, whereas we have thought for many, many years about the charity, uh, you know, we're there to help out, uh, we're there to give a helping hand, uh, all of those kinds of things, with more and more, particularly in the social issue area, of thinking about why can we not deal with some of these systemic issues and get to the root causes of things in order to, to change? Why are we not putting some of our organizations out of business in, uh, you know, by dealing with some of those heavy-duty, wicked social issues? Corporatization, corporatization of the sector, I think, is extremely important to think about because all of us, those of us who work in this sector, keep getting this barrage of we need to be more businesslike. Uh, I read an article a long, long time ago that said, um, uh, uh, why would you want to be more like business? Business is generally medio you know, is mediocre. Why would you want to aspire to be medi uh, to mediocrity? So, it, you know, have to think about that in terms of what does more business-like look like. It looks like probably metrics. It looks like bottom line. It looks like uh, not thinking too much about top line, which is where my head always goes to the top line. 
and technology and social media, which I try to avoid. And uh, at my age, and I'm not terribly successful as I stand here with this clicker, and um, uh, definitely within the context of this room, I don't think I have to talk much about technology or social media. The word volunteerism, vol uh, the word volunteer, if you look in Wikipedia, it says time freely given uh, for the benefit of others. And I think most of us in the sector would still stay with that definitional piece. But we've compromised that definitional piece in, in many, many instances. We have mandated volunteerism in schools and in universities for, uh, to earn credits. Is that volunteerism or should we call it something else? We have employer-supported volunteerism, which uh, I am very definitely an advocate of, but most, uh, an awful lot of corporations give time off. So it's time paid to go and volunteer in community. Is that volunteerism? Uh, the whole discussion around informal volunteerism, which isn't where I'm really focusing my energy today, but when I shovel my, my neighbor's walk, am I being a volunteer or am I just being a good neighbor? If I go to see my grandmother in the senior's residence, am I being a volunteer or am I being a good granddaughter? All of these things, I think, uh, make us think about uh, do the words volunteer, volunteerism carry baggage? And I need my little squares up there so I can speak to them. Uh, do I have to hit it again? There we go. Uh, these are questions I think that we need much discussion on. Uh, a lot of what we think about, a lot of what a lot of people think about in terms of, of volunteerism is this uh, informalized uh, traditional volunteerism is this wage replacement free labor construct. And I think about that all the time because you often see, once we started to put an economic value on time and volunteerism, we start to see little bits that say, uh, it, it, this many volunteers volunteered with this particular organization, and which is equivalent to this many, this many uh, full-time positions, paid positions. So immediately we go to the wage reduction piece, and I really do not want on my epitaph that I saved an organization $2,432. Uh, is it a means to an end versus an end to itself? Uh, we think about the nonprofit sector as having volunteerism within the context or community engagement within the context of their DNA. But do they have it within their DNA, or is it just about, again, that free labor construct uh, or is it uh, a means to an end, a means to get the work done? Or are we the place where people actually engage with community? One of the best places for people to engage. Charity versus change, again, going back to that systemic uh, charity versus the systemic change agenda. Bureaucra bureaucratization of the sector. I think for a lot of people, they say, you know, they will come and say, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go there. I don't want all those rules. I don't want to have to be there at a particular time doing a particular thing every day of the week. So is there room to think beyond uh, very structured volunteer opportunities? Uh, and the last one uh, that I will mention is uh, some organizations that are looking at volunteerism as a cost center now. Do we really want to spend money to have all those irritating people involved trying to tell us how to better do our jobs? And, or do they look at the fact that there's an immense amount of talent out in the community that can help us as organizations grow and change? Does it matter? Does it matter when we have uh, conversations around language? I'm not sure it's clarity of language we need. I think it is perception, uh, clarity of perception around being engaged in community. And I think as long as we uh, get blocked by uh, some of the, the language and the misuse of the language that we reinforce a, a very dated version of community building. And I truly believe personally that we need a whole new lens, a new construct, uh, a much bigger uh, look at uh, what we should be doing in terms of engaging community. I love this, this particular slide, Mind the Gap. There is a definite gap in organizations between direct service volunteering, the hands that we need to do the work, and uh, recruiting the minds that we need to make organizational and social change. And uh, I think that gap is another thing that needs to be talked about quite, quite uh, um, a bit quite a lot uh, in terms of community organizations. The spectrum of community engagement opportunities over the, in, in my quest or my 
my um, looking for new conversations, thinking about how do you reconfigure, how do you reformat what you might want to say about, about volunteerism, and started out working with four volunteer centers across the country to say what are some of the opportunities that are offered within the context of, of organizations. And we started out with a spectrum of volunteer engagement opportunities. We ended up with a spectrum of community engagement opportunities. And we used the word volunteerism once within the whole context of the spectrum. Direct service, very definitely traditional volunteerism within the context of an organization. Episodic opportunities, I'm sure everyone in this room has been involved in episodic opportunities, whether it's building a playground, Habitat for Humanity, uh, doing something wonderful in your community. Uh, it's called, uh, in some instances now, we hear the words micro-volunteerism, where you can do things in seconds or minutes. Uh, and virtual volunteerism, where you never have to move away from your desk. Service learning, which adds a component of, of reflection to the work that you're doing, where you can actually deal, uh, start to think about impact, the impact you have personally and the impact you have uh, on an organization or on a community. Leadership options, lots of them. Uh, sitting on boards of directors, uh, being part of task groups, think groups, uh, all kinds of things you can do within the leadership op uh, options. And the newest, I think, is this whole skills-based option pro bono work that a lot of uh, corporations in the country are, are interested in where they've done episodic activity within a corporation for many years and are starting to realize that some of the problems, some of the issues in community are really quite significant and how do we help build the capacity of organizations to deal particularly with some of the really wicked social issues and move some of our skills out to build the capacity of the sector in very different ways. So an opportunity again to use heads and hands in, in, uh, within the context of a whole spectrum. What are some of the contributors to the status quo? Another great slide, all these people running around, running around, all going in different directions. Uh, one of the things we don't do in nonprofit organizations is think about integrated human resource management. We don't sit down with, uh, in our planning groups looking at our strategic thinking and say, what talents do we need to get this work done? Uh, what talents can we recruit to get this work done, both paid and unpaid? And looking at a one workforce agenda. That, that notion comes from, from actually the Vancouver Olympics, where all of those people we saw in jackets were referred to as one workforce. And it didn't matter whether you were paid or whether you weren't paid with money. And I don't know about all of you, but I feel that my volunteer work, uh, my engagement in community is well paid with other things beyond money. The other thing in terms of integrated human resource management that isn't happening is that managers and directors of volunteers are isolated within the organization. So they end up sticking with those good old job descriptions, position descriptions, and they have bright and talented people coming to them and, and have to say, you don't fit and they have no power or positioning to then move these people up into in, as change agents in their organization. And the last one, I think, that is probably the, the one that worries me the most is the whole issue around risk management and risk mitigation. I had a friend just recently tell me uh, that an organization he worked with a number of years ago uh, that dealt with vulnerable people um, had about 300 to 350 volunteers a year. In doing a risk assessment, their auditors basically said it's too much risk. They now have no volunteers. They have professional staff dealing with uh, their client group and are not engaging others in, in the issues that their client group are, are challenged by. I think that's very, very sad when we get to the place where mitigation is where, where we think we have to go. Why is this discussion important? I think all new conversations are important. Uh, we tend to focus on problems when we could be focusing on exciting possibilities for creative solutions. We know that we have brand, uh, lots of new technologies to use, and we know that there is renewed energy in communities to really be engaged and want to make a difference. So in closing, I would say I hope you will join me in expanding the conversation, expanding the conversation about 
uh, community uh, uh, you know, engagement, uh, the importance of social capital, the importance of civil society to elevate this free labor construct to a much bigger discussion. We need people's hands and we need their heads and we need their hearts to really make and own the community, to, to grow the communities where they, they live, to make sure we have strong, resilient, healthy communities. We can't do that if we aren't together participating to make that happen.